Now, if you're looking to get into 3D printing, but would like to have one of the fastest printers on the market, then you'll want to watch this video because today we're taking a look at the Creality K1 Max, which is one of Creality's flagship printers. This thing is fast. It's able to create and print out prints in a really rapid space. And this is part of a new, I would say, lineup of printers that are hitting the market. 600 millimeters per second is the max speed with acceleration that is mind-boggling. That means how quickly they had to go from this point to another point. It's like zoom, super duper fast. It's literally gonna be 12 times faster than other printers that you've seen in the market. And we've been using it a lot in our home because of some of the things that we're doing with 3D printing. And I'm able to prototype items and test them in minutes versus hours. So it's a great advantage. Now, the build volume, and then you can compare this to the K1 smaller version is much larger. Uh, the build volume is 300 by 300 by 300. Nozzle temperature can go up to 300 C. Bed could go up to 100 C. And or, and then the other thing that you have is you really have the ability to pr print a lot of different materials, right? Because of the flow, because of also the hands-free auto bed leveling. And also this printer does have LiDAR detection, which means that as it lays the first layer of filament on your bed, it's going to actually monitor, detect it, scan it to make sure that it's got the best first layer. And first layer, I would say, verification is really important. It's using AI to do this. Now, the nozzle is 300C and the heat bed is 100C. So this is going to give you a lot of flexibility when it comes to the type of materials that you'll be able to print. It has a dual gear direct drive extruder and it has a great flow rate hands-free auto leveling. So what you used to do in the past, you don't have to worry about it. This thing will auto level. It has self-test with simple one tap gesture, and then also has um, AI technology that's really taking a look at the, the print, the very first layer. And in 3D printing, the very first layer is the most important layer because it kind of sets the tone of everything else. Well, what this will do is it will inspect that first layer to make sure it's good. And then the AI technology is going to be monitoring your build throughout. And if it finds that there's a defect, it's going to stop. So you don't have to wait 12 hours to see a failure. But as soon as it detects that there's a problem, it's going to stop the print and give you the choice to either continue it or stop it. Now, the uh, printer itself has multiple ways that you're going to be able to print from. You can use Wi-Fi. You can use USB. And uh, we've been using the Creality app as well as the Creality Cloud to get prints on it and been very happy. Now, given the size and also the fact that this is enclosed and it has all this cooling uh, technology, you're going to be able to print a whole host of, I would say, uh, materials. ABS, PLA, PETG, PET, TPU, PA, and, and so on. You can just look at the list of different type of materials that you can work with. So this is going to give you the most flexibility and the most speed. The killer feature for me, the thing that really makes this printer stand out outside of the speed, which that in itself is, is great, is going to be some of the AI technology that's going to ensure that you get the best prints. And we've been very, very impressed with the speed and the overall quality that we're getting. Now, this printer is being improved, right? So it's getting improvements and regular improvements coming from Creality because, again, this technology, the high-speed printing technology, is very new to the industry. So you're going to be seeing a lot of improvements and also a lot of benefits with this printer. Now, since the launch of the K1 Max, there's been several improvements to the printer. Uh, this happens to be one of the latest models uh, from Creality, and we've been testing it out for the last several weeks. Now, a couple of things that you'll notice, first of all, having had the K1 on the channel, is that this is a very much larger printer. And you can see by the actual size of it, not just from the outside, but we'll take a look at the print bed and we'll see how this is very different from the K1. What I like about this uh, printer, though, is the fact that you do have a glass front door. We'll go ahead and open this up right here. And you can see that I have some loose filament because I have been printing. There's been a lot of stuff going on with this printer. And I also have been making some slight changes. So first of all, one of the things that I've noticed from the first generation K1 Max and this version of the K1 Max is that you do have right here a little guide here when it comes to temperature. And some people say that this is how you can identify if it's one of the latest versions or not. Now, the other thing that we'll see inside is that this printer does come with LiDAR. So it has uh, this little LiDAR that's going to inspect your first level. And it actually is doing that. We've seen with every print as we're launching the print, it actually will go through and it will do the inspection. In addition to that, you do have a camera and you have the camera module right here. This camera module has been, uh, I'd say, has been very clear for us. So we've been able to see everything that's going on and we've been able to monitor prints remotely. Now, one of the things that I did immediately is I changed the bed. So it did have a, uh, a different type of sheet. 
I went ahead with the PEI sheet. I ordered a replacement. I just like the finish, and I also like the the how the material sticks to the print bed um, immediately. And I didn't have any problems with this. Uh, all I did is I switched the sheet, and just for the sake of uh, just being thorough, I actually ran a bed leveling test just to make sure that this wouldn't be an issue. And as you can see here, and we'll get really closer inside, we had no problems uh, leveling or even printing. Now, as we get closer inside of the printer, you can see a couple things going on here. Again, here we have our LiDAR, we have our print head right here, the nozzle here at the bottom. I was highlighting the fact that we have the camera. You do have uh, this part cooling, right? And what I did with this is actually, I uh, put a little muffler on it so that it would get a little bit more quieter. I don't know if it's kind of like a placebo effect or not, but it did, it did make it a little bit quieter for me, especially as I was running this um, in my office as I was doing a lot of tests. This printer is also, just like uh, the, the other printer, very easy to set up. You actually have these little white indicators that I left in, actually these yellow indicators. These are where some of the screws were placed. And as soon as you get this printer, all you do is remove these screws and the setup on this printer is a breeze. Now, every single time this printer kicks off, it does come to this area and it does a kind of like a calibration. It does the leveling and then it goes through the process of setting things up for your actual print. You also notice that here in the back, you do have an exhaust. You can see the rails here. I haven't had any issues where I've had to do any kind of, I would say, uh, tightening of the belts. Everything is pretty much stock. Now, before we take a look at the actual operating system, I'm going to show you the side. So while the top is glass, front is glass, the back is uh, plexiglass, so it's not truly glass. On the back here, there's a couple things that you'll see. This is where the filament is loaded. This is probably my least favorite part of this printer, and I really don't like the angle here. I, when, when I open this up again, I'll show you. It has a really sharp angle, and I know many people are modding this printer, putting the principle on the side, and changing the way this is fed here, this this tube because there seems to be some friction going on here. Not a favor of this. You'll also notice here at the very bottom, you do have a ethernet port. Uh, you do have over here your power button, your power switch, and you can see that you do have a carbon filter. Now, as you see here, this is the sharp corner that I was mentioning. I just don't like the angle that it goes in through here. And I find at times that as I'm feeding the filament, it kind of gets uh, stuck here a little bit before it feeds all the way through. So your, here's your filament. You do have a drag chain. And one of the things that I've done is I don't really have the keeper here anymore because as you're changing filament, it's always a good idea to remove this. And I just found that it's easier not to have it on here. Uh, the uh, extrusion uh, process is pretty straightforward and also the retraction process is pretty straightforward. Some printers, like I mentioned in my previous review of the Flash Forge, don't have a reverse extrusion, right? This one does. Now, when you're doing that, you'll notice here there's this little switch. So what you'll do is before you load your filament, Right? You will want to make sure that you unlock it, right? And then what you'll do is lock into place once you've pushed it in and you feel it catching. Uh, so again, once you do the extrude or the actually the retraction, you will basically, the filament, you'll be able to pull this out easily. And then what you'll do is you'll unlock this when you feed it, you'll lock it again, put it into the lock position, and then you'll do your load. It's pretty straightforward. Now the touchscreen is very responsive and I do like how well organized this is. So here is your home button. Here you can go and look at your different settings. By the way, this is the home button for the software, not the home button for the printer. This is the home for the printer here. All your settings are really easy to find. So you have your movement, your temperature. Again, if you can extrude or retract, you have your cooling, right? All that stuff is nice and in place. Over here, you basically have all the prints that we've printed, and we have printed quite a few. Let me just go down so you can see. Lots and lots of prints. Now, what I do here is I do a lot of prototyping uh, for some of the prints that we've put on our Etsy store and love the speed of this printer. Love the fact that I can crank out the prints really quick. I am using Hyper PLA. I've also used Polymaker Matte PLA and both perform really well. If I go into, oh, one more thing I wanted to highlight. There is a um, function where you can actually get the USB um, if you'd like. On the side, there's a USB port that you can use. And then you can see all the history of all the prints that I've been printing. Quite, quite a bit. In the settings area, screen brightness, screen uh, time off, language setting, you can do your self-check, uh, and then you can look at your root account information, network capabilities, and then also you have your camera, right? So we'll go into this area here. This is where you can do is your error history. You can see if there's been any errors, and then you can also do uh, upload of a log if you're going to be doing any kind of maintenance. So all in all, this works really well. Now, from a print perspective, we did a lot of printing, and you saw we had a lot of prints on that printer. And I wanted to share with you traditional stuff. Like first we did our Benji 
And from a Benchy perspective, the Benchy, is, this is like a 16 minute Benchy. It did well, right? And you can see what the quality of the Benchy looks like right here. I'd say though, it's not a perfect Benchy. So you can see some um, lining here that we have. Uh, I would have liked to have not seen that present. But again, it's a 16 minute Benchy, right? I'm sure there's ways that Creality is going to be improving it. Um, it did have a small brim on it, right? And you can see how everything looks like right there. I did a cube as well, right? And by the way, all of this stuff is using Hyper PLA. So let me go ahead and make sure you guys can see that nice and clear. Uh, not again, perfect, but still good, right? And again, this is using the Creality Print software. I know that a lot of folks are using the Orca Slicer and the quality is much better going through the Orca Slicer. So that's something that we'll be doing as well uh, later. Uh, you can see a little defect there, but again, high speed. Uh, so we've been also then uh, using other filament. So this actually happens to be filament from Polymaker. So this is a Polymaker print, and this actually came out really nice, right? So uh, we've been playing, we've been doing some tweaking, and this is again a part uh, for a laser engraver that we printed. And I'm really, really happy on how it turned out. Now, the PEI sheet that we have on the K1 Max has uh, two sides to it. It has the rough coarse side, and then it has this side that also makes it look like it's a carbon fiber look. And you can see uh, how nice that looks like right there. So uh, this piece, I'm really, really happy with this. This is Polymaker PLA. This is the, again, Creality Hyper PLA. This one has more of like a, this is a, a plasticky look to it or feel to it. Uh, this one is a matte finish, and I guess it just it just feels a little bit different, right? Uh, just like the way this looks, and you can see that it's super duper clean. So really like the print quality that we're getting out of this, even at high speeds. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.